Good evening, everyone. This is uh, Professor York again, and uh, we have a... another lecture for you for marketing management. And this one, hooray, it's about tactics. All right, enough of strategy. Let's get to the really nitty-gritty fun stuff, right? Uh, this is what everybody thinks marketing is all about. But uh, I want to do a quick overview around tactics so at least you're exposed to different tactics, including a, a variety of social media sites. I will then direct you as well. What I would suggest is I do believe that's up on Poly PolyLearn. I did put um, PDF from a great class that uh, Professor Lindsay Mullick and I had attended in June. Uh, on social media strategy, which really gets into much more of the granularity of um, each of the major sites and how to set up your accounts, how to do metrics, etc. So this is much more high level. Um, I certainly hope it will give you some appreciation for the diversity of tactics that are there. Okay, it isn't that we advocate one tactic over another, but I, I, it is one of the things at the end of the day, after you put together your strategy, your messaging, you know, your, your positioning concept messaging, you get to the execution. And this is what you'll hear some people refer to as channels, media channels, etc. Okay, not to be confused with distribution channels. So we're going to talk about our fun stuff called tactics. When I was a product manager, I had a lot of fun working variety of things from print to video to, you know, online to um, major trade shows, which was always my funnest thing, as well as symposia and education programs. So, but you got to keep in mind that tactics are what most business do but the problem is is that most business people and this is what they think about go to market do everything okay let's just shoot all over the place and fish everywhere and you know I got everything in the world but you know one of the common questions that we do here from businesses is a uh, where should I spend the money you know where am I gonna get the best return so what that requires is, is, is what we've been working on, which is strategy, which is understanding your customer, understanding the branding, understanding where the customer is going to go and how the customer wants to be talked with. And that's why we spent so much emphasis on this so that we could be more like this gentleman on the right hand side who is much more targeted and being more successful in, um, catching fish. So. We need to keep in mind one thing, direction. So you can, especially with social media and the internet and websites, is it's not just about traditional outbound, what we call push, okay? And a lot of media has been over the years just pure push. TV, ad, print, okay? And even if you go and you have... Um, Email, you're getting stuff through from various people that you don't even know of that are using providers like Constant Contact. Okay. But savvy marketers, okay, are now using what we call inbound, where they're creating their content that is meaningful, that speaks your language, creates a community that you want to be a part of. And you have a dialogue around issues and things that are not necessarily product oriented, but around your problem, around your issues and things are important. It could be your neighborhood. It could be your, um, your students. It could be your kids. It could be your pets. If you have a, a certain disease, it could be about your disease issues, uh, that are there. So, you know, though that's very important and it's going to only be more important with social media because it is not about pushing your product. And unfortunately, we have a lot of small businesses. It's about push, 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 put the deal, push, push, push. And they forget that it is about the customer, number one, what the customer's going to do. When the customer has a problem, what are they going to do? How are they going to type in the Internet on Google or whatever to find a solution? 
And what you need to be thinking about in creating, especially on your website and also through your Facebook page, but the website is you've got to create great SEO and dynamic SEO and SEO in terms of content that speaks to your customer. Okay, so that's why I talked about brand and relationship. So there are a variety of promotional tactics. Okay. There are those that can be earned. Okay. Can you take a guess what could be earned? And those that are paid, which we already have figured out. TV, you know, ads, uh, paying for stuff that comes up on internet banners, print ads, radio ads. But then, you know, the flip side, especially if you're an entrepreneur, is you're looking for earned. An earn involves a little work, which means you've got to create your content and story and get with media. And this is where PR firms do come into play. So I was working marketing, um, global marketing with Allergan. We create these studies, but prior to going to major meetings, we get out with our PR firm and then we get with the trade journals to do what we call pickups, which are quick stories. And in fact, Part of the work I did uh, about 10 years ago with Alcon was I used to write those stories, highlight certain studies, certain things going on, and have good relationships with editors. So in essence, that they would pick up the stories for free, okay, earned, or interviews with your key customer, interview with the entrepreneur owner, okay, Look at what Donald Trump had done. I don't care whether you like him or hate him. Or what I care about is, as a businessman, he got unbelievable amount of free media during his campaign because of interviews, both telephone as well as live. And so that is the master of being able to take advantage of free media through the press. Okay. Another way you can do it is blogging, and we'll talk about that a little bit further as we go along. So earned equals free. Here we are, Donald, PR, Twitter, okay? Communication of followers, articles and news stories, interviews, get out there, and last but not least is the blog. And the blog, anybody can do. You can do it on LinkedIn. You can do it tying it to your website, but and it's great if you do that because it improves your SEO score if you're changing it every week. And guess what? It doesn't have to be overcomplicated. You know, we're talking about maybe 500 words, put some pictures, some keywords that tie into what your, you know, what your audience is looking for. You do a long tail, which is really cool, a long statement that ties in and then and it just improves your SEO. Okay, so you know, that's earned and free. Traditional, we all know what traditional is. Okay? Print, radio, TV, you know, direct mail. By the way, flyers are still out there. Okay? That are there. And they usually tie in with some couponing or something like that. The, the, the smartest media at the end of the day, and if you notice this trend, because I've been noticing on radio, has been with a call to action, driving people to websites, or signing up with a promo code for a discount. Call this 800 number. Go to this website. Use this promo code. Why? Because they want to know whether it works. Okay, so they're, they're paying for the ability to get metrics to know, does it work? One, if it's the channel. But more importantly, does the message work? Okay, and that's that's what you're looking at. And this is sometimes where a, a, a firm that has on the Internet will run maybe what we call a B testings, where they will test two versions of ad copy or even ad look different websites, see what the pickup is and what they do with the pickup is going to be either the click throughs or ultimately the call to action, whether it's sign up or actual acquisition the other thing product placement I think we had that uh, if you do recall in our first class where we had with the Subaru commercial but you know it is big business in TV today it helps finance TV and film okay and TV shows so 
This is ubiquitous. It's a, a great way of being able to get your product as a character, not in your face, but you see it there. And it just creates repetition because it's ubiquitous. And so therefore what happens is you create this heuristic. Oh, see the cloak glasses there for American Idol. Geez, they must like Coke. Good. You know, it's late afternoon or late, late evening. You know, maybe I'll get a Diet Coke. I'll get a caffeine-free one since I want to go to bed soon. Okay, so product placement is very key. Uh, I have a friend who's in the entertainment business, and that was one of the things that we were looking at for a reality TV show that we were going to do was to be able to finance it with product placement. You know, then you got what we call live. And this is what I used to do as a product manager. Trade shows. How many of you have been to a trade show? Man, they are fun. They are just gigantic. It's, you feel like you got multiple football fields of vendors. And in some businesses, this is where the business gets done. PGA Golf Show, one of the largest in the world. They got two of them, one in Vegas, one in Orlando. Okay, uh, it's where equipment gets sold, new things come out, etc. Also is the electronics show in uh, Vegas is just amazing where the latest and greatest in tech come out. I worked in, in healthcare and I had a pharmaceutical trade show with the American Society of Health System Pharmacists was gigantic. This is where we would be able to interact with a number of our customers uh, this is where we would meet with them. This is where we would get a lot of business done. Literally, when I was a product manager, I'd come in on Friday night. And between Friday night and Wednesday, for well, the trade show, I would just be booked from 7 a.m. to 11 o'clock. I got three months' worth of work done in terms of customer contacts. Just was fantastic. Um, at the American Academy of Ophthalmology and various other trade shows where they have surgical equipment, what they will do is surgical manufacturers, this is where they get business done because this is where doctors go to buy their equipment. So trade shows are a very, very key tactic, uh, especially when you have equipment and new technology that's coming out. And then you've got one of the most powerful tools, okay, the sales force. The sales force is where basically you earn the coffee. Your coffee is for closers. They are the people who build and hold those relationships. So they are your brand ambassadors. Okay. They, as you say, get, keep their ones that are not only getting, but keeping. They're the ones that really reflect your brand in terms of the company. Okay. So, they are very, very critical, and they need to have materials. And so we may have um, digital, because most sales forces are moved to iPad, but there's still a lot of print materials, leave behinds, as well as um, we may have various, you know, like when we were in the medical area, we used to be able to leave behind pens, pads, etc., which we can't do anymore. Uh, we used to have renderings of the heart, how the heart looked as physical, as a education tool that was there. So various materials to help with self-representative to be able to deliver message, be able to articulate the value proposition, and at the end of the day, be able to close the customer. And then there's digital, which we're all familiar with. You know, you got your phone, you got your iPad. We worked with a company earlier this year and last year uh, that's in Chile. Uh, they got a app that is for vision screening. Um, and so that's, we've got to build a digital strategy around that. And as we know, digital involves a whole host of different uh, tactics. You know, the most Notable is really, and I'm going to start here, is your website. The way your website is designed has to be for dynamic changes, okay, because of SEO. But even the nature of how the website has been, which would be for doing commerce, for doing, you know, just landing and attention, and the dynamics of website have changed over the last 10 years. One of the standards on a website that you have to have is multiple. You have to have a hero image. 
it has to be clean on the face page and you've got to have at least some places for dynamic SEO in terms of blogs and you need to have call to action. So with websites, SEO and AdWords, it's what keeps Google making tons of money. Okay. But also as you have your social media, Facebook, Twitter, and we'll go on and on as we talk. Uh, but there are other things that tie in with the web, such as banner ads and, you know, that, that could pop up on websites direct to your website. Okay. There is automated, which is the integration of social media and even email together. HubSpot is a very good example and is a big, big, where you can basically integrate your um, marketing communications plan and activities that are there. All right. And then you have email with like constant contact and MailChimp. In fact, we're going to do for a client, we're going to use that uh, for recruiting for dinner meetings. And then there's the blogs that we've talked about. And we talk about social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram, and WeChat. If you are in Asia, uh, WeChat is very, very big. And uh, I learned that from working with uh, some partners um, up at Berkeley on some projects that are there. But uh, each of these have their, 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 the most popular, as we know, are Pace, Facebook and Twitter from a global perspective. And then you have uh, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube sort of following. YouTube probably be uh, bigger than the other two. WeChat being a big in China. <coughs> but the big two is here. Not The one thing that they realize is when you start working across channels that not all these channels are appropriate. We have, a, based on your customer and your customer segment, I have a customer we're working with in 454. It is targeted to B2B and to B2U, not to B2C. But meanwhile, they're doing Facebook campaigns and Twitter. <coughs> and the reality is, is that they should be focusing in on LinkedIn for the professional audience. And their, their tactics socially it will not fly, and that's why they've had failed campaigns, because this is not where your customers go. So the key point about social media and all media is understand your customer and where does your customer go for information. So let's let's segue into the social. So where should my business be? Okay, so first as foremost, as I've mentioned, understand the personalities of the social media site, Understand these parameters, audience it goes, the use, the rhythm, the media, and tools that are there, and the personality, role, knowledge, and approach. And we'll, we'll go in, but this is very, very critical when we think about our social sites. So we'll walk through. Here's the business site, LinkedIn. It's formal, professional, B2B. It, it, it reeks experience, credibility, it's your resumes, but this is where if you're looking to get a job or recruiters are looking for candidates, this is where they look. Well, the tools involve personal profile, a company page, because companies do have, they have specialty groups. I belong to medical device. I also belong to various alumni groups. I belong to Harvard Business Review groups that have common association. It is not a push, but it is rather the pull here that makes this work because we have common interests. We have forums for Q&A and status update. I literally get from LinkedIn at least two to three emails a day in areas of my interest. Then you have Facebook. And Facebook we characterize as the potluck gathering of everybody. And uh, qualities are entertaining, connecting, and personal really personal as you know how many people have in this classroom a Facebook page it's touching because it's more authentic and personal to you it's a form of and what the key thing is is where LinkedIn is B2B this is B2C and you can relate it the tools you have are your personal profile your pages your events your ads and this is where you can micro target in certain areas with your ads in the B2C space, you can micro target based on user qualities, groups, 
even uh, zip codes and you know in addition you have things like apps and new feed so this is why Facebook is and it's I think it is probably the most used site now on the planet and then there's Twitter Twitter is basically 140 characters you throw in a, an attachment in terms of picture video etc it's Donald Trump's favorite tool okay how he reaches his audience and I think he has the largest audience to date that's bigger than the Pope, bigger than um, a variety of um, celebrities, including Kim Kardashian. Okay, but the qualities are short, sweet, to the point introductions, quips, short conversations, worldwide relationships, sharing of things of trending topics. It is quick, fast, new, current. Okay, and you've got to be constantly on it to be active your tools are not only your primary tweets but your retweets and and with your audience you have that and you build that audience and you follow people you use dashboards a lot to know what's working what isn't working and you can also tie in ads chats and search and very very key thing to get greater emphasis is the good old hashtag and then we got youtube one of my favorite because i use it for my education but folks are creating YouTube as we saw with the video that we had on day one as their own channels and it is a visual immersion it's informative entertaining emotionally moving because that's what video is and it can be viral because you get a good you get a good clip and you share it with all your friends and the ability to embed something either as a link or as an embed on a web page or on or like we do in polylearn for these videos or to send it around just it's it's great and video is just so much more easy we're in a video generation and with tools like i use here a screencast-o-matic it's very easy for people to be able to do whatever education like we're doing here the tools are for search and visibility that's there and and building your own channel and having relevance to your audience and then there's Pinterest I actually like this I learned about this in the spring and I think this is really cool where you have your your interests you're able to pull from various visual pieces that are on the web around your interests such as food and wine and exercise which I get on a regular basis uh, and what's neat about this is that if you are in um, as a provider service you participate in these communities you can have pins that come from your website so the great thing is is that you can be able to have from your pins links that tie basically your customers straight into your website so it's fun it's playful it's inspiring it's titillating it's enticing it's it's action oriented it moves quick because you're pulling in common interests and then people are looking at your pins and you know it just builds a community and as I mentioned the pin from the website which I think is like the greatest thing because at the end of the day when you're doing this stuff you want to drive if you're into into commerce you want to drive traffic to your website because you want to build the community directly to your website to your product to your service etc and it's viral man it is I just see it coming in and out of my my inbox and well, the things that I've picked, I mean, I have people liking my pins, sending me more pins, etc. And that's just a common food and wine. You can just imagine it turns you a specialty interest. All right, so here's a nice little cartoon. You know, it's like, oh yeah, this Pinterest thing. And you know, what's so funny is when I started getting to know it a little bit was when I was working at MDI Care. And we just said, oh, we'll throw it in. It's not going to be. It's Facebook and Twitter, okay? And I said, God, oh, all right, this is a giant tack board. So you think about it, okay. And then, you know, you start, it's very addicting when you start pulling things out in there. And it's like, geez, I got to have it all. So, you know, I, I think of this as something that you, you originally go, oh, not really a big deal. It's going to be another one. I don't have time. But it can be very addicting. And then you got the Instagram for those folks into photos. And now with smartphones, it's great. It's trendy. It's visual. It's, you put your hashtag, but you have to be consistent. 
Yeah, and that's the other thing I see with a lot of social is you have to be there present, participating, contributing to the community, not promoting. That's being a good community member. It's not the place that you push. It's a place that you participate. You build your brand there. You put the message out and the information that's relevant to your customers, and then you create the pull because there's, as we talk about inbound, there's something that is of value to your customer. And photos, which are becoming more and more really a big driver in terms of photos and images, you know, Instagram is one of those there. And then we got Snapchat, which um, my business 310 students um, were using this. I had one team last spring that loved Snapchat. And uh, what they do, you know, quick snacks, fun story, present. It's present time. So what it is is you have the snap and it goes away. But they have these filters, which are really funny. And, 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 and I think that's the addictive quality of it. And it tends to be a, um, a tool that you see with... Um, younger individuals uh, high school college you know maybe early millennial age it's because it's fun and i remember when um the students in the team who was working on um one of the projects startup projects they when they do their presentations they basically at the end of every presentation they had a photo of all the members of the team who've gone through a snapchat filter and they all look really funky but it was a lot of fun and they had a lot of fun i think just doing it so anyway just a thought for your next presentation uh google plus okay is now it's social seo uh and it's seo it's authorship it's um it has business pages local places so news feed and uh, communities that are there so you know you tie your circles that are there with your personal profile um, and unfortunately if you look at the social SEO as you compare it to uh, um, say Facebook as we see in terms of a number of units uh, it's probably not as ubiquitous in terms of use and uptake as uh, that you would see with um, Twitter or with Facebook and then there's SlideShare I don't know if you're familiar with it but this is a, another great tool and I've used this a few times when I'm looking for slide decks but you're looking for information generally with your business audience uh, or your academic audience and looking for a, some sort of informational topic um, usually visually attractive um, you tend to have your tools and this can be your own profile being part of that community uh, it's a PowerPoint native so you can download and you can uh, as part of that community you can um, share so you can download and uh, you can upload um, uh, presentations that are there and what's great is there's some great stats and a great dashboard uh, similar to what you would see uh, save such as maybe the most powerful dashboard being um, or at least the most powerful metrics being Google and then there's meetup meetup I've seen in terms of especially down Evo Nexus down in San Diego uh, it, it serves the job it does is to help to facilitate and lock down people for uh, a variety of events okay so it serves the meeting community in person meetings great visibility it's versatile um, it's business focused but also is uh, used in the sports sp space as well and some people will use it for like you know family gathering hobnob I actually see meet up for hobnobs as well and uh, the tools that you use will be like a group page or you know you have your own because you got to have your own profile uh, but then you can use tools to promote your your event which I tend to get when I'm um, doing um, like marketing Mondays are set up on meet meetup for Evo Nexus and what's great is you can share it so lots of tools great things especially if you're trying to drive the traffic is not to your website the traffic is to your meeting and then we got Yelp which is great for local business this is fantastic for travel it's fantastic for food it's fantastic for like in the wine business it is definitely something that we've had several clients in our 454 very concerned about actually one of my students got a job to work at Yelp and it tends to be the business owner especially small business owner 
in the hospitality business and it tends to be the consumer and the consumer um, uh, recommendations pro and con and it helps a lot of people so ask yourself how many times you've used Yelp and Yelp has been a driver basically based on recommendations that come forward you come into town and you look at Yelp reviews uh, TripAdvisor being another one in terms of making a decision, you know, which restaurant you go to. And what it has is business listings, you know, reviews, photos, info. Sometimes you can uh, link it to your website so you can actually take a look at the menu as well. So that's it here. Um, next class, what we will do is we're going to get in a little more detail around um, metrics with social media because I think that's that's going to be very very helpful uh, as we go forward and to when we do social media when we do tactics we at the end of the day have to measure things and we also need to think strategically how it fits into our funnel strategy so what I've done give you a snapshot across both social as well as a variety of tactic options that are available to the marketer i'm sure that you that you could list several other that are there but these are some of the major ones at least to become familiar with and now i've satisfied everybody's yearning to do tactics and learn more about tactics because they think this is what marketing is all about but we all know smart marketers are still about strategy so anyway that's number two video so enjoy it and i'll see you next week